Have you heard about the first time home buyer incentive program? Well, if you haven't, it's crap. Or is it? Watch this video to find out. Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Jen McPhillamy, real estate associate realtor with Yeg Pro Realty. Have you done it? Yeah, I'm talking about clicking that subscribe button. Go ahead, click it, and don't forget that little bell so you don't miss out on great content like this. Have you heard of the first time home buyers incentive program? If not, here's a quick summary. Essentially, a program where the government of Canada gives first time home buyers some money towards a down payment. They're just not giving every first time home buyer this money, you have to qualify. And if you qualify, you can get 5% towards our resale home or 10% to new construction. Definitely, you have to check out their website or talk to a mortgage broker to see how to qualify for this program. But the top qualifying points are, one, you are a first time home buyer. You don't really have to be a first time home buyer, but there's some rules around that, so check it out on the website. Number two, you have to actually qualify for a mortgage. Weird your income or your combined income cannot be greater than $120,000 per year. Oh yeah, and also you already have to have a minimum down payment of at least 5%. So check out the Government of Canada's website, a place to call home.ca. It's, it's an excellent resource to get you started and to get more information. They also have some pretty cool calculators on there. Most importantly, speak to your mortgage broker or your mortgage specialist. After all, if you can't qualify for a mortgage, what's the point in looking into this program anyway? Okay, so you've done your research. You spoke to your mortgage broker, mortgage specialist, and you found out you qualify. Great, free money. Or is it? Well, there are many opinions out there. Some people hate this program. They say it is high risk and potentially a huge headache for future homeowners when they go to sell. And I have to agree, there is always potential that this program could become a huge headache. However, it may be worth that headache if it helps you save money, right? Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna go over an example with you that's gonna help answer these questions. Number one, do you qualify for the same home purchase price with this program as you would if you didn't use this program? Number two, what savings could you realize if you use this program? And number three, what happens when you go to sell? Will you lose a ton of money? So if those are questions that you want answered, stay tuned. We're gonna start with number one. So do you qualify for the same home purchase price with this program as you would without this program? Now, I bet you're thinking, well, I probably can get more because the government is giving me more down payments, so that means more house. Well, sorry to say, you wouldn't be right. So I worked with a mortgage broker on a few scenarios. We used some assumptions regarding credit score, credit card debt, car payments, and with you having 5% down. So with the incentive program to afford a home for $350,000, your household income needs to be at least $83,125 per year. Without the incentive program, your household income would only need to be $77,000 per year to get that purchase price of $350,000. Alternatively, let's say you want to afford a $300,000 home. With the incentive program, you would have to have income of $75,000 per year. Without the incentive program to afford $300,000 mortgage, your household income only needs to be $68,000. So yes, it does affect your buying power. So if your household income is at $77,000 and you want to afford more home than $300,000, let's say $350,000, you could still qualify for the incentive program, but you would have to have a much larger down payment your down payment would have to be 42,000, which is about 12% of a $350,000 mortgage. And that example is based on getting additional 5% for a resale home. Okay, so question number two, what savings would you realize if you were to use this program? Well, for one, your CMHC premiums would be lower because the money that the government puts towards your mortgage does count towards the overall down payment, and the more down payment you have, the lower your CMHC premiums are. Also, another savings you would realize is 
lower monthly payments. Okay, so on the Government of Canada's website that I mentioned before, there's a pretty cool calculator and it will tell you how much monthly savings you could realize. I have seen it ranging between $80 and $200 per month. So let's say for easy math that you save $100 per month on your mortgage bill. Over a five year mortgage term, you would have saved $6,000 in monthly payments. And remember, that's on top of the CMHC premiums that you already saved. Sounds pretty good to me so far. Okay, so question number three. What happens when you sell? Will you lose money? Okay, so the deal is, when you go to sell, you have to pay back the government. Unless you sell in like 30 years, you have to actually pay the government within 25 years. Okay, but let's say it's less than 25 years that you're selling. You have to pay back the government the same percentage that they lent you, except this percentage is calculated against your new sale price not your purchase price. And this is where that pain and gain sharing comes in. So for example, if you bought a home for $300,000 and it was a resale home, the government gave you 5%, which would have been $15,000. So that means you still have to pay back the 5% when you go to sell. So let's say you go to sell and your sale price is 350,000. Well, 5% of 350,000 is 17,000, $500. So you're actually paying them back $2,500 more than what they gave you. But if you go to sell and the home price has dropped, let's say you sell for $250,000 for easy math, 5% of that is only $1,250. So you're paying back the government $2,500 less. So yes, the government is sharing in your equity or your equity loss. But does it work out for you at the end of the day? I think it might. Let's just look at that example that I gave with saving $100 per month on your mortgage. So let's say when you bought your home, it was $300,000. And in five years, you sold it for $350,000. So 5% of that, remember, is $17,500. So that's extra $2,500 to the government. But don't forget, you saved on CMHC premiums and the monthly payments alone were a savings of $6,000 over that five years. So just considering the monthly payment savings, you're still $3,500 ahead. So is the first time homebuyers incentive program complete crap? Uh, I don't know, but maybe. When I look at the numbers this way and how much money you will keep in your pocket, it seems like a pretty good option. But we haven't got to the spot where people have been selling homes that have been on this program. So I don't know what problems lie ahead. There could be no problems and that would be great because then you had a savings and no problem with selling. Anyway, comment below. Tell me what you think of the program. Are you gonna use it? So this may be just the tip of the iceberg for information on this program, but I hope it gave you some good insight into it. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. If I can't answer your questions, I can definitely get you in touch with somebody who can. And remember, every one of my clients has a unique personal and financial circumstance. I am always available to meet with you customize a strategy to get you where you want to be. Take care. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.